Good morning and welcome to Access Health. Genetic testing involves the examination of DNA, our own chemical code that instructs our bodies to grow, develop, and heal. However, what if there's a mutation, an alteration, or a disorder in those instructions? What does it mean for us? Joining us today, a patient who knows firsthand the impact of a genetic mutation, experts in the field of genetics, and a super lab who is dedicated to helping advance science through collaboration. I'm Erica Vitrini. Access Health starts now. While it's public knowledge that disease risk can be reduced by living a healthy lifestyle, few are aware of the strong role that genetics and family history play in a person's current and future health. In fact, almost every human trait and disease has a genetic component, and there are more than 6,000 known genetic disorders. The decision to get genetic testing is a very personal one and should not be taken lightly. Sometimes getting a genetic test can influence the treatment or management of a disease. Christine Fenwick joins us now with her story. I was diagnosed at the age of 34 at my initial baseline mammogram. The physician that performed my mammogram noticed something that was very small and decided to biopsy it. And after they biopsied, that's when I found out I did have breast cancer. And the best choice that I made for me was to have both breasts removed. My mom and I are very close, extremely close. In fact, we're almost more like sisters. As I've gotten older, we've become best friends that I truly enjoy our relationship. And my mom has always been really adamant about you're getting your mammograms 10 years before when I got diagnosed, which was age 34. So I've always, it's always been in the back of my mind, but when I turned 24, it really started to become a reality they began to ask the questions of what is your family history and do you have any parents, grandparents that had cancer? And my mom, of course, came up in every one of those major doctor appointments. So genetic testing became a reoccurring thought in both of our heads at that point. The growing field of genetics has made remarkable advances, including identifying genetic changes, which increase the risk of developing diseases such as diabetes, heart disease, and several types of cancer. There are hundreds of genetic tests on the market, and new tests are becoming available all the time. How do we know if genetic testing is right for us, and how do we know we can trust the results? Well, joining us to help navigate is Dr. Aaron Elliott and Dr. Rabina Smith, Medical Director of Oncology at Ambry Genetics. All cancers are a genetic condition, meaning when the cell divides, it has a programmed instructions in terms of its DNA and it knows what cells are going to divide and when it's going to die. If something goes wrong in that transcript, let's say, the cell mutates. It's actually passed down in the family. It's in the genes. So we get a copy of genes from mom and a copy from dad when we're born. So we have these set of instructions. And we were passed down the instructions to possibly create a cancer. And that's hereditary cancer or hereditary cancer syndrome. Family history is very important for people to know and to understand. So when we talk about genetic conditions, knowing what family members had that condition can determine how at risk you are. The difficult part is, is not everybody knows their family history, or people only know what their parents had or what their grandparents had, but very few people know what their great-grandparents had. I would recommend that every person ask the question of who had what and when in the family. When is important. So let's say grandma had cancer, she's 80 now, but she had cancer when she was 30. She had a mastectomy, but no, no one knows because, you know, she looks like good in her clothes and all that. You never know. Grandma had a mastectomy. Well, she was young when she had her mastectomy at 30. She's 80 now, doing great. That means she's a survivor of her cancer. However, she could carry a gene that passed down to her daughter. You know, so it's important to know because screening guidelines are set based upon what your risks are. Our risk indicator, our hereditarycancer.com website, is more of a educational website for the patients and their families. So I can actually be an active participant and walk in my doctor's office and say, listen, I went on this website at Ambry, here's my risk indicator that tells me I'm at high risk for something. 
should I be referred to genetics? By doing genetic testing, we can determine are you at high risk for a particular condition. Just because you don't know your family history doesn't mean you should not get tested. Testing can reveal whether a person carries gene mutations associated with certain inherited diseases. The test involves analyzing blood, tissue, or saliva for evidence of genetic abnormalities. Genetic tests typically fall into three categories. Carrier screening, to determine whether adults carry a genetic mutation that could cause disease in their children. Prenatal diagnostic, to learn if a fetus is affected. Predictive testing, to discover the presence of gene mutations that may put a person at a higher risk for a particular disease, such as cancer or diabetes. Coming up, not all genetic testing labs are created equal and how knowing your genetic testing results can impact the next generation of your family. A genetic test is not something to take lightly and there can be a lot of questions about your results. It is important to find a genetic counselor to guide you through the process. When we sat down to do the family tree, the genetic counselor was amazing. And she said to us, well, we're not testing Chelsea today. We're not testing your daughter. We're testing you, Chris, because we already know you had cancer. We often want to test that person who presented with that unusual cancer uh, at an unusual age or an unusual presentation because we will be able to find the culprit or the mutation faster and easier than testing for a range of things necessarily in family members. And four weeks later, my test came back and the t to the surprise of everyone, I had a gene mutation called ATM, which sometimes can be associated with early age breast cancer as well as pancreatic cancer. So everyone has been focused over the last 20 years on BRCA1 and 2, because obviously those are the two genes that we've discovered. Uh, and we know that those two genes alone carry the highest risk of breast cancer, so upwards to 60 to 80 percent chance. But what we discovered were there are other novel genes that might be drivers for some of these breast cancers. And about 30 to 40 percent of the patients who were negative for BRCA1 and 2 carried these other genes, such as ATM, PALB2, TP53. And so with being able to run now a panel when you're testing for genes versus just BRCA1 and 2, when you run a panel that has the genes that now have been associated, the newer genes that have been associated with breast cancer, helps us now identify these families who have these other genes that might in indeed have been the reason why they develop breast cancer. For example, ATM. Typically, if you have a mutation in a gene like ATM, or for instance, BRCA1 and 2, which is also a DNA repair gene, you have a higher chance of developing other mutations because your DNA cannot repair itself efficiently if damaged. I received my diagnosis from a genetic counselor. I received information of where I could go for help, support, clinical trials associated with pancreatic because I had already done everything I needed to do, surgically speaking, for breast cancer. And then we had the discussion about Chelsea. What did we do for Chelsea? I was terrified because then at that point, it's a reality that you're next in getting tested, which we didn't go back for a whole year because I think I had to let it really sink in that there's a possibility that I'm 50% at risk for having the same gene mutation as my mom. My first worry was Chelsea. What do we do now? What is the next step? Do I leave it up to her? She's 24 years old. I moved in with my boyfriend and we got engaged and the reality of having a family really started to sink in and I wanted to know for us, for our future and for my future and to be even more preventative than I already was expecting to be. I called my mom and she was just, I don't even think we spoke on the phone. We were just relieved and happy and settled. It was a good feeling. Chelsea's test came back negative. A big relief to our entire family and joyful to know that the gene stops with me. The power and the knowledge and the science behind genetic testing is so cool that they can do that now and they can settle your mind and your soul 
by testing your genes and your makeup and seeing if you have this mutation, if you don't, and you can really plan your future by finding out this information that they provide. With knowing the result is it's a blessing. I avoided it for 20 years and it was the best thing that I could have done because I knew I did everything I could, everything in my power to not have a recurrence of breast cancer. I already did it. And I found out after the fact that I had a genetic mutation. I knew that I did the right thing. Genetic testing has given healthcare providers vast insight into the prevention, treatment, and cures for disease. It's no doubt that it is one of the most important diagnostic tools in today's medical arsenal. How do we know if genetic testing is right for us? What steps do we need to take to get testing? Dr. Elliott explains. All labs aren't created equal and all tests are not created equal. Ambry's stance is we will not sacrifice quality for anything. People make very drastic decisions based on these results, be it family planning decisions, surgery decisions, uh, surveillance decisions, and we do not want to miss any mutation in anyone's genes that we're testing for. It's very technically challenging for, for a patient or even a doctor to understand the differences between lab A's test and lab B's test. So it's very important for the patient to go to these companies' websites, uh, even call the company up and say, how do you do your tests? What's the accuracy of your tests? Most ordering providers who are savvy in genetic and genetic testing already understand which labs are the ones that they trust because of their history, because of their technology, because of the experience that lab has. When you order a test from a genetic laboratory, everybody is using called next generation sequencing. When Ambry does a test, we take that mutation that we discover and we confirm it using Sanger sequencing. So it's a different technology. And the idea behind that is if you are positive, if your mutation shows up with two different technologies, we are confident that this mutation is not a false positive. In our experience, about 2% of next generation sequencing results are actually false positives. So if you do not Sanger confirm, and there's labs out there, believe it or not, that do not, 2% of these, of these results could potentially be not even real. We're very heavily invested in the technology and in the science of, of what we do. Uh, and that's seen in the super lab. Uh, the Super Lab is our new state-of-the-art, highly automated lab, 60,000 square feet. Everything in that is customized, and, and you'll find things in that lab you will not see in any other lab in the world. The way we uh, process the samples to the way we aliquot out the liquids, everything is done on robots, and that really limits the hands-on time for, for technicians so they can do other things that are important that they couldn't do before. Uh, one thing we do at Ambry that's unique is we DNA fingerprint every sample when it comes into the lab. And then we DNA fingerprint that same sample at the end of sequencing. So that way we can compare the results before and after to make sure, number one, we want to make sure it's the same sample. There's no sample swaps. And number two, it provides a accuracy check. As the technology gets better and better uh, and people get more educated, I think genetic testing is going to really make its way into the general population, into mainstream, as people become aware of their family histories or what genetic testing can do. I don't think it's gonna be limited just to uh, people with very strong family histories or affected individuals. I think it's gonna be opened up to, to everybody, and it should be. There's still a lot of unanswered questions in the world of genetic testing, but there are ways that we can contribute to a larger cause. Ambry Genetics believes that data must be shared to enable collaboration worldwide. Dr. Elliott explains. Ambry Share is it's a very unique uh, thing that nobody is doing, especially nobody in the genetic testing industry. So if you look at BRCA1 and 2, for example, it's, it's a great example. So it was discovered over 20 years ago to be causative of breast cancer and ovarian cancer. If you think of the time that's passed since then, we've only discovered, if you look at breast cancer, about 20, 25 new genes in over 20 years. That's very slow progression. So the majority of patients that get tested are going to be negative. No one knows what gene is causative. And that's where Ambry Share comes in. How can we help find other hereditary cancer genes or other genes involved in any condition? 
So what we did is we sequenced 10,000 hereditary breast and ovarian patients that came to Ambry. And we sequenced every gene in the genome to find what genes are causing their particular cancer. And we found a wide variety of, of new genes that no one had ever discovered for breast cancer, ovarian cancer. We took all that data and we just gave it to everybody for free. Pharma companies, academic labs, anybody who wanted to look at the data. And this is what needs to happen to really progress science, I think, and really find all the genes that could be relevant for a particular uh, type of condition. And you know, at Ambry, we kind of felt it was our responsibility to do that. Our goal and vision is to cure and to help people and, how, and cure diseases. And so it, our founder felt that this was something that had to be accessible for free in order for us to see a change, for pharmaceutical companies to be able to collaborate with researchers and identify new treatments and, uh, and medicines and therapies that will help counteract what we have in terms of an epidemic of cancer and diseases. Uh, you know, in our population. It is important to know that just because you test negative for what's known doesn't mean you're going to be negative forever. Once we find a mutation and we can now classify it as pathogenic or benign, we'll contact you and let you know. And that's how AmbriShare fits in as well. If you include your, your data in AmbriShare, one day we may find the gene that, that is responsible for your particular condition as we add more and more samples. AmbriShare is kind of our our answer to the Precision Medicine Initiative, being able to have a data share, a, a database that has this uh, genetic information in that scientists and researchers can use and draw upon. But that's the beauty of collaboration. That's the beauty of scientific research and innovation, uh, is that we are learning new things about how this body works uh, and how um, new technology can equal new treatment modalities uh, and healthier patient lifestyles in the end. When you think of Amber Genetics, you know, we're at the forefront of genetic testing because we are a privately held company. We don't answer to venture capitalists. We don't answer to banks. We're not into this to, to cut costs, to cut corners. We're going to do the highest quality testing possible every single time. And we're going to do what's right for the patient and we're going to do what's right to promote science. Understanding your genetic inheritance is one of the most important things you can do for your children and your family. The way to get started is to create your family health history and share your pedigree with your doctor to see if genetic testing is right for you. I'd like to thank our guests from Ambry Genetics today and especially Christine and Chelsea for sharing their personal stories. For more information on genetic testing, visit AmbryGen.com. And of course, you can always visit us at accesshealth.tv. See you next time.